So what's the VMAX R55 Pro electric scooter? That's coming right up. Welcome to Run Playback. This week, we're cruising through the streets on the VMAX R55 Pro electric scooter, a high performance ride that's ideal for urban commuting. Let's break it down, go over its features, and see if it lives up to the hype. So let's get to it. The R55 Pro isn't like a typical scooter. It features dual motors offering 3,200 watts of peak power, propelling you to a top speed of 34 miles per hour. Whether it's flat streets or tackling a 40% incline, this scooter doesn't flinch. The wide footboard and sturdy rear footrest add to its maneuverability, ensuring control even at high speeds. Powered by a 48 volt, 18.2 amp hour battery, the R55 Pro is designed for those extended urban rides. The three power modes cater to every type of rider. Whether you're cruising at a gentle 12 miles per hour, we Weaving through traffic at 25 miles per hour or pushing the limits at 34 miles per hour. Safety is a priority with dual mechanical disc brakes backed by regenerative braking, ensuring you come to a stop as swiftly as you take off. However, the model we tested had a little too much stopping power, which we'll get into later. Today we're checking out the VMAX R55 Pro electric scooter. So let's do a walkthrough of all the features. So the R55 Pro has dual motors for a total of 3,200 watts peak power. If you've ever ridden a dual motor scooter, it's really interesting. It's a lot of torque. So here's a look at the front mechanical disc brake. And on the left side of the scooter is the rear mechanical disc brake. So opposite ends on this scooter. When we unbox the scooter, the brakes were really tight. So you might want to adjust them before you start riding. Uh, there's also regen that's pushed into the scooter. So there's a lot of braking power and you want to make sure that you dial that in before you ride. Over here we have 10 inch tubeless tires. So we got the integrated front fender and an integrated rear fender. You have a really wide footboard over here. So plenty of room to find the right stance when riding. You also have this footrest, which is nice and sturdy to keep your rear foot planted. So underneath the footboard is a 48 volt, 18.2 amp hour battery. It's non-removable. So you just wanna make sure you store this inside in extreme weather conditions. So you got integrated front headlights and integrated rear taillights with brake functionality. So here's a look at the wide handlebars. You have the ergonomic hand grips right here. You got a little bell. The mechanical disc brakes, you can adjust them so they're not hitting your knuckles. Up here are the controls for the display. So S, you go up on the power assist level, D to go down. You got a center mounted color display. So there are three riding modes. Uh, so first riding mode, you have a top speed of 12 miles per hour. Mode two is 25 miles per hour and mode three is 34 miles per hour. Here you have the right hand thumb throttle with the power button and the lights on off button. The handlebars are okay. They can be adjusted uh, to find the right angle for your riding style. To fold the stem down, you just unscrew this piece over here. So this keeps, keeps it locked in place. And then this just folds down like so. Now I don't see any place where the handle locks in. So that might be an issue when you're transporting this thing. This doesn't really feel like a scooter that would be folded frequently. You know, if this is like your main commuter vehicle, it'll always be upright. So the total weight of the scooter is 65 pounds. It, it feels kind of heavier than that. I don't really like holding this up. Not the type of thing you want to bring up and down stairs, but you can if you wanted to. It is pretty heavy duty. You know, this is definitely one of these high performance scooters that you would take through the streets if you needed to. You could take it on bike lanes and it'll withstand a certain amount of potholes and uneven terrain. It's not one of these scooters that is so powerful that it's scary. Um, it does only hit 34 miles per hour. So, you know, depending on your experience level, that's pretty manageable and you don't actually have to go that speed. The brakes definitely need adjustment because they definitely feel really strong on the stock setting. I think it's a combination of, you know, the mechanical disc brakes being a little too tight and the regen just being a little too strong for my taste. So now that we've gone over all the features, let's take the VMAX R55 Pro out for its first ride. First ride with the VMAX R55 Pro. We'll set it to power level one. All right, here we go. So nice big footboard. Find my stance, I like to keep my right foot kind of planted at an angle a little bit. 
I like to keep my left foot on the footrest. And that feels really comfortable. I think maybe the handlebars are just a little too, too close. Kind of hard to see the display, but that could easily be adjusted. So the tune on Pedal Assist Level 1 feels really good. Really easy to maneuver. Feels like the controller tune is delivering power in a very natural way. Thumb throttle is responsive. All right, so let's bump it up to power level three. All right, here we go. Woo. <laughs> Lots of power right off the line, super responsive. Parking lot is really bumpy, so I'm feeling, feeling all the bumps but I'm definitely feeling the response of the scooter. It's leaning a little bit. And like I said, the brakes are just, the brakes are just a little too strong. My right is the front wheel and that just feels just a little too strong over there, but I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah, I mean, if you're experienced with scooters, uh, you'll definitely feel right at home. I wish there was more, more suspension on this thing. Really easy to maneuver. You gotta kind of lean into it. You know, you gotta throw your body into it a little bit. And we'll do a little brake test. So first impressions with the VMAX R55 Pro, it definitely like I would consider a high performance scooter just because of the dual motors, the level of power, the weight. This is something for people who want to use this as their main commuter vehicle. It's not the most powerful scooter we've tried. You know, a scooter that can go past 40 miles per hour is really, really interesting and really not for everyone, to be honest. Those kinds of scooters require a certain level of experience. This one, I think if you're just used to like ride sharing scooters, uh, you know, like in the city or whatever. This is a step above that for sure. I think you'll really enjoy the amount of power it delivers, how easy it is to maneuver, the super wide footboard and the footrest. And um, I think really just the weight would be an issue carrying this thing around, folding it down and having nothing to latch it to might be an issue for you. I think for a 48 volt dual motor scooter, it delivers exactly what you want out of it. So yeah, pretty fun. The integrated 60 Lux headlights and brake lights keep you visible day or night, while the 10-inch tubeless tires promise a grip that can handle more than just paved roads. And according to VMAX, the scooter has a rubber torsion suspension system. However, it needs to be ridden for 30 to 60 miles for it to kick in. The scooter's 4-inch color TFT display keeps you in the loop with essential info like battery life, speed, and power level. However, the stem's angle may have you leaning in closer than comfortable to catch those details. So here's what we like. The wide footboard and robust footrest make it a breeze to ride and maneuver. The dual motors deliver powerful acceleration and hill climbing ability, perfect for urban commutes. And it strikes a decent balance of accessibility, offering high performance without being overwhelming for most riders. But here's some things to consider. The lack of a latch for the stem when folded can make transportation a hassle, something to think about if you're on the go. The mechanical disc brakes might need a tune-up to balance out the aggressive, regenerative braking system. Also, the stiff, rubber torsion suspension means you'll feel every bump on the road until you get more miles in, which might be a deal breaker for some. Overall, the VMAX R55 Pro electric scooter is a solid commuter EV designed for the rider who wants something casual enough to ride in bike lanes, yet powerful enough to ride in traffic. While it packs a punch in terms of performance, the weight, brake adjustments, and suspension are things worth considering. So what's your take on the R55 Pro? Does it fit your urban commuting needs or do the cons outweigh the pros? Share your thoughts in the comments below. As always, if you want to dive into more EV tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.